Hey guys, we're going to look at the central limit theorem video for your stats class. Um, if you have a population of data and it's not feasible to gather all the information that you need for your particular plans or study, then you can take a sample from that population and it's a good idea to pick a sample size of 30 or larger, which kind of fits in with central limit theorem. But anyway, long story short, um, if your X variable possesses any distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then the sample mean, which is X bar, remember Greek letters are population, English letters are sample. Uh, X bars for a sample, mu is for the population. Same thing with standard deviation. Um, S is for a sample standard deviation, whereas sigma is for population standard deviation. But as long as your variable comes from a somewhat uh, symmetrical population, then you pick a sample size large enough, then it's going to be normally distributed. Um, in fact, the larger your sample size, the better off you'll be. So we're going to have um, a sample mean X bar based on a random sample of size N will have a distribution that approaches the distribution of a normal random variable with mean mu and standard deviation sigma divided by square root of N. So that brings up a little vocab we've got to look at. The mean of our sampling distribution will equal the mean of our population, but the standard deviation has to be adjusted for sample size. And this one is what's called standard error. Okay, so standard error of a sampling distribution is the standard deviation of the sample you take. Notice the larger n gets, the smaller that your standard error becomes. And that's why it's good to take pretty large sample sizes. Statisticians kind of agree that 30 or larger is the magic number. And then your um, X bar distribution will appear to be normal and the central limit theorem will apply. Uh, again, you got to be careful not to just apply that blindly. There's also an adjustment for a Z-score. A Z-score in these cases are X bar over your estimated average and your standard error, which translates out to X bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. If you're given a sample size, you're going to want to divide by the square root of that sample size. Okay, so describe how the variability of the distribution changes as sample size increases. As your sample size increases, the larger your denominator gets, the smaller your standard deviation or standard error. It decreases. If we have a distribution of X values that is more or less mound shape and somewhat symmetric, what is the sample size n needed to claim that the distribution of sample means x from random samples is the, that size, excuse me, of that size is approximately normal? Again, it's agreed upon that the sample size is 30 or larger. If the original distribution of X values is known to be normal, do we need to make any restriction about sample size in order to claim that the distribution of sample means X taken from random samples of a given size is normal? 
We do not. Known to be normal. Then you do not have to worry about it. Suppose X has a distribution with population mean 52 and population standard deviation of 8. If random samples of size 16 are selected, can we say anything about the X distribution of sample means? We cannot. The sample size is too small. However, if the original variable, excuse me, if the original X distribution is normal, and we know it up front, can we say anything about the X distribution of random samples of size 16? In this case, yes, the X distribution will be normal. Recall that mu is gonna be equal to mu sub X. And then, so that's gonna be 52. You do not have to worry about changing the mean. The standard error, now that's where you've got to watch it. Now, the standard error of this one is two, but let's think about why. Sigma is given, and our sample size is 16. So this is eight divided by four. Which is two. If we were to increase the sample size to 300, then you still do not change your F average, your mean of your estimate. This will become eight over square root of 300. And let's see, we'll just round this to a couple of decimal places. Usually it's rounded to four, so maybe we can be consistent. Eight divided by square root of 300 is 0.4619. Okay, so the average or mu, don't change it, but sigma sub x, you do have to take the original sigma and divide it by square root of sample size.